tātou katoa, nau mai, haere mai, nā mihi nui ki a koutou. A very warm welcome to the Transitional Cathedral today. Uh, it's slightly chilly. Um, I know some people are um, doing this a wee bit. Um, uh, but anyway, it's great to be able to be here together to offer our thanks and praise to God um, this morning. Uh, we were meant to be having Bishop Peter this morning, who um, kindly offered to come and to preside and to preach. However, this morning he woke up and tested positive for COVID. So there we go. So um, you're going to be stuck with me instead, uh, and I'm going to be preaching Bishop Peter's sermon when we get to it. Um, at the moment, our um, children's holiday, uh, sorry, our children's Sunday school Kiakaha's Friends programs um, in advance because uh, Elizabeth's not well either. Um, so that at the moment is on hold. Um, and we're not doing morning teas or anything else as well because of COVID, but please do keep your masks on um, through this service. Uh, welcome to those who are joining us online. We do hope you can enjoy the service as well and download the service sheet and join in with the prayers and with the music. We'll pause for a moment of silence as we become aware of God's presence with us and then in a moment I'll ring the bell and we'll be underway.
te ingo, te atua, te matua, te tama, me te wairua tapu. Um, grace and peace to you from God. Once again, a very warm welcome as we are gathered by Christ the Good Shepherd and as we are fed by him as he comes to be among us in the breaking of bread and also to open our hearts to understand his scriptures that our hearts may burn as we hear them too. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith and are themselves forgiving. In silence we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in what we have done, and in the goods we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate thought. We are truly sorry, we repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of the Lord. of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. 
God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen.
reading from the book of Acts, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. The apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa paying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me. And we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us, then we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was... Who was I that could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, beginning at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Or so he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 13, beginning at the 31st verse. At the Last Supper, when, Jesus, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one and other. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one and other. This is the Gospel of Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of our liturgy today, uh, Bishop Peter was to be here and he was going to preach. However, he has tested positive for COVID this morning. Uh, so he emailed me the text of his homily that he was going to give, and I'm now going to read his words. It's pretty shattering, isn't it, when we read these readings this morning and then look at the world around us. So much exclusion, so much death, so much unloving, hate speech, cancel culture, war, threats of more war, rising crime. Yet these readings, these precious scriptures, which speak of a better, kinder, more hopeful, inclusive, life-giving and life-fulfilling world make the obvious point. The death and destruction we see around, around us falls a long way short of the best we can and should be as people. The pain and trouble we encounter in our world is not God's plan. The world God wants to bring into being is a place where tears are wiped away, death is no more, and the thirsty receive water from the well of life. There is another way, and let's be honest with ourselves, it's a challenge to find it. In Acts 11, for instance, the Apostle Peter tells the story of a dramatic shift in his cultural and religious mindset, which was locked into the privilege of the Jews as the exclusive people of God. The unity of the human race was far from Peter's mind. It took a vision and a visit and the work of the Holy Spirit to disrupt his mindset. It was a challenge for Peter to become part of God's bringing a better world into being. Among other things, Acts is the story of the massive change which saw the followers of Jesus become a movement for all humans, not only for Jews. But our honesty means we need, we need to say that we are still learning what it means to be fully inclusive of all humanity. There is another challenge in our readings, in the Gospel reading. 
There we find Jesus saying three of the most beautiful sentences you could ever hope to hear. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Love one another. Yes, we say that's a crucial thing we must do. The world is, also, is always a better place when we love one another. Love is all you need, the Beatles sang. And of course, we all cheered. Yet, Jesus includes a challenge. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Jesus loved his disciples by washing their feet and then dying for them. That suggests we will have occasions when loving one another is difficult and not easy, when it requires us to love the other person sacrificially. Yet we must be this loving people, the better world God is bringing into being, is a world in which love dominates, and Jesus asks his followers to give a lead, to give a lead, to be the ones who understand the crucial life instruction, love one another. Indeed, Jesus tells us he expects this leadership and love will be seen by others. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Why would others want to join us in working with God on his plan to bring into being a better world? Answer, because they see the love we have for one another, costly, sacrificial love for each other, and want that love for themselves and to be part of a community of love as we live out the new commandment Jesus has given us. Here's the rub then for us. Often when we hear humans talking about a better world, a new world, a world without the problems we currently see around us, we expect some grand plan, a manifesto, a chance to elect a supreme leader who will make it all happen. What does Jesus talk about? He talks about not waiting for the manifesto, not looking for the grand leader to take us forward. You, he says to each and every one of us, you love one another. Little acts of love, big acts of love, it doesn't really matter. Every bit of love we have for one, for one another is the love which brings God's new world into being. Let's do it. Let's love one another. Spoken in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. To the bidding in your love and mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. In your love and mercy. God, our beginning and our ending, you brought the world to birth. Let coastlands and mountains, rainforests and deserts be praised for our Lord. We pray for the welfare of this planet for wise and just use of its resources, that we may be good stewards of your bounty. In your love and mercy, you judge the peoples with righteousness. Let rulers and leaders praise our God. We pray for all who are in authority, those who govern and those who dispense justice. We pray for the places of conflict and war, that peaceful resolutions may be found. May your people live in peace and harmony. In your love and mercy, you offer redemption to all your people. Let all who believe praise our God. We pray for your church for its clergy and people, that we may be open open to the promptings of your spirit. We pray for Bishop Peter, for Dean Lawrence, and all who work and serve in the cathedral and in this diocese. In your love and mercy, you come among your people in love. Let women and men, young and old, praise and love our Lord. We pray for all who live and worship or work in this place and in this city, that we may be a community where acceptance, compassion and love abound. In your love and mercy, you share our pains and wipe away our tears. Let all who find comfort Praise our God. We pray for all in need, for those broken in spirit, heart, or body, especially those we know who are affected by the COVID pandemic, that they may find strength, relief, and consolation in your love and mercy. You turn death to new and everlasting life. Let all faithful praise our God. We give thanks for all who died in your love, and we pray for ourselves, that we may come at last to your holy city, children of a new heaven and a new earth. God, our beginning and our ending, in your love and mercy. In a few moments of silence, we bring to you our personal and private prayers. In your love and mercy. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. with you. We offer one another a non-contact sign of peace.
Christ. By one Spirit we're baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. We are bound by the love of Christ. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Gracious God, you show us your way and give us your divine life. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen.
thanksgiving, Holy Father. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given you thanks and praise, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And again, when he had given you thanks and praise, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ our great High Priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. teaches us, we pray. share in the body of Christ. We are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. I am the vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever lives in me, and I in them, will bear much fruit. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of love, in this Eucharist we have heard your truth and shared in your life. May we always walk in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple of notices before you stand up. I just would like to acknowledge um, Sue Baldwin and Philip who are here with us today. Um, Sue has been the vicar of Mulven for a while and an archdeacon of our diocese and is moving up to Kaikoura. But it's just really lovely to have you here with us today, um, have you both here. So thank you and um, all the best for the next chapter of your lives. Um, you'll notice there's a, 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 a notice in our pew sheet about an organ recital next Sunday to be given by Sian, who's a member of our choir. Is he there today? He's not here today. Um, anyway, his dad's very keen, as you all know, and um, wants us to be aware of this um, organ recital coming up to be given by CM next Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's a violin recital. My, my apologies, I'm getting my words wrong there. It's a violin recital. Anyway, so I'd like to call your attention to that. And if you happen to come across um, Gavin and Pauline Yates, today they're celebrating their um, it's a diamond wedding anniversary a very long time of being married anyway and a few of us are going out to celebrate that this afternoon this evening we do have the um, cathedral grammar service um, with all the chapel choirs and the awarding of scholarships and all that and I commend that to you it should be a wonderful occasion please stand for a blessing God of peace, who by the blood of the eternal covenant brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is pleasing and good. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Alleluia.